Arduinos, and stepper motors. Folks, this video is going to cover five things. We're going to do the basic setup. We're going to do number two, just a simple full rotation in the Arduino code and then the hardware. Then we're going to start looking at controlling the speed, both in the software and with a potentiometer like a knob. Fourth thing, we're going to use a button, both to start and stop a stepper, but also to have the stepper run while you're holding the button. Then when you let off, have it reverse back to its home position. And then finally, we're going to end with talking about some speed issues, what happens when you're trying to run steppers in Arduino code. It affects it. Let's dive into some solutions. I'm really excited, folks. This is the start of a little series we're going to do on working with Arduinos and motors. We're going to start with this as sort of the framework, but what I'm really excited for is we're going to get into DC gear motors with encoders, speed controllers, some pretty awesome stuff. It's really probably the most exciting thing to me out of all the things we do here on the NYC CNC channel. So welcome to another Wednesday widget, folks. So the thing I love about Arduino is I'm not an electrical engineer guy, sort of like I'm actually not a machinist, I'm self-taught. I like getting these to do what I, want to, what I want them to do. So there's some great resources here. We're going to be posting the code for this on the Patreon website, and you can see the little I for that. That is a supporter website, so if you pay a dollar a month, you get access to all this stuff, the CAD files. We're going to do a separate video on how we made this little bracket in the CAD and CAM, so if you're interested in that, you can click on that. We're going to start off with a simple Arduino program that's going to rotate the stepper a full rotation and back. First off, all of the hardware controls are labeled right here, so there's no need for a schematic. I don't really like schematics. I don't read schematics. I read to pin layouts to me. We'll take a closer look at the push button and the pot later in the video. There's lots of detailed videos about stepper motors and what they are and how they really work, but here's what basically they are. There are 200 intervals, or 200 steps, and magnets or whatever they are, pull the stepper motor to its position. So I think of it not so much as a motor, but as like a click position thing, like a knob that clicks around, and there's 200 little positions, and when you put current on it, it will click one position. So that's what we're doing. We're sort of pulsing the motor to have it click around 200 clicks. Now most of the time, or a lot of the times, you'll use fake clicks in between those clicks that are called micro steps. In this instance, we're doing 16 micro steps. So what you really have is 16 micro steps for every one step. So if there's 200 steps, regular steps, and that's intrinsic to the hardware, to the actual motor. You can't change that to make a rotation, but the driver, we're using the easy, uh, big easy driver in this video, is 16 micro steps. That means 16 times 200 is 3,200. So it should take 3,200 steps in our code to make a full revolution. What we've done here is we've got an interval of distance zero. That's to track how far we travel. Speed, what is speed? Well, the way you control a stepper is you send it basically a pulse, and then you chill out for a second, and then you send it another pulse. How quickly you send those pulses, how fast it moves. So in, that it's the, in this instance, the speed is actually a delay. How long do you wait between them? The shorter that number, the faster we send the pulses, the faster it moves. Okay, what we're doing is we're hooking up the Big Easy driver to the Arduino via digital pins 8, that's the direction pin, and 9, that's the step pin or the pulse pin. So all that 8 does is say go clockwise or go counterclockwise. Pin 9 is the one that we're actually be pulsing at to control the motion, induce motion. So what do we do? Write, the, write pin 9, that's the step pin high, wait for uh, however long we want. Again, it's a formula here referring back to this 100. And then go low, wait, and then go back, and it loops through that. And every time it loops, it does distance plus 1. Distance equals distance plus 1. So what that's saying is when we get to, if distance is equal to, notice the two equal signs, that's for equal to. When, so when distance, which is a formula that changes again based on this, matches the full rotation value, and that's the value we set right here of 3200, then that's saying, hey, you, got, you just went a full revolution. So now I need to go backward. So what you do is you change pin 8. So if the pin 8 was low, you're going to set it to high. And if it was already high, that's what the else does. You're going to set it low. Reset distance to zero. And then you have a delay here that you don't really need. So you can see we're alternating there to there, like so. We took off the other stuff here. This is a really cool encoder that I'm excited to use. And that is actually going to help us tell, because one of the criticisms of stepper motors is they can skip steps or they can miss steps. They don't know how far they went. They just go as far as you tell them to go. 
So we're gonna hook that up in the next video and see how accurate this really is. Now, let's control the speed. Now the easy way we can do that is in the code. We can just change that speed interval. We had it at 100, if you reduce it to say 25, that will reduce the delay that happens between the pulses. Easy. Let's do it dynamically with the potentiometer. So how do we do that? We have to add a few things to the code. The speed we're now going to have is an analog read of analog pin 3. We'll take a quick look at the hardware here in a second. That's going to input an analog binary whatever resolution is, which is basically 0 to 1023. We don't care about 0 to 123. We want it to be a delay range to control our stepper with that length of pause. And I, we know from experimenting that, you know, 25, and these are, these are milliseconds, is about as low as we can go, and three or 400 is pretty slow. So what we're going to do is the map function. So what you say is speed equals map of the speed number again. So that's the number we just read off the pin, the zero, which is 0 to 123. So that's the input range, and we're going to convert that from... 25 to 300. So you're basically taking a range that goes, sorry, this way, and you're saying, I only want it to go in between these two. And we're doing it from 300 to 25 and not 25 to 300 because you want, you're generally, it's more normal to have the knob, the motor turn up as you increase the knob. To hook up the potentiometer, most of them are like this. Um, I'm sure there are exceptions. But you simply run, there's three legs, you run one of them to plus five volts, that's the purple pin here, and then the other one, this is the far right pin here, we're running to ground via this yellow jumper. And then the center pin is the one that actually varies. That goes over here to analog pin 3 input on the Arduino. So basically you're passing 5 volts through this thing, except that output in that middle pin varies as you rotate the knob. While we're here, let's take a quick look just to show the only other connections we've got here between our Arduino, our breadboard, and our big easy driver. We've got the big easy driver connected to the ground on our breadboard, and the ground on our breadboard is connected to the ground on the Arduino with this blue cable here. Five volts from the Arduino to the breadboard. Again, that's important for the potentiometer and the button. And we've got the two pins for the step easy driver. The red and white here correspond to the red and the white down here. These four, first four, the red, yellow, green, gray are the stepper inputs, and then the black and the red over here are the 24 volts from the bigger power supply. The button, which we're about to talk about, the two leads here sh short together when you push the button down. So what you do is you have a connection from ground to this leg, and then when you, and then here on the other leg we've got a wire going to Arduino digital pin 2. So when you push that pin, it connects that to uh, ground or, or, or goes low. What you have is you have a resistor here that pulls it high. Uh, yes, there are built-in pull-ups. I know that on Arduinos, we're not using one here. But basically what that does is it means unless there's a clear ground signal, which would only happen if I'm pushing the button, unless that's the case, I'm always going to see it as a high pin, or in other words, there's always going to be a little bit of 5-volt signal going here until I push the button in, and it's overwhelmed with current from the ground here. Let's add a button here. So when you push the button, it does a full rotation, and then when you push the button again, it goes backward. We need to add an integer or in for the button state. We'll, come up, we'll explain all this in detail, and then an on or off state. As we discussed, the button is on our digital pin 2, so that's an input pin for the push button. What you do is, you, in the loop, you do a button state is digital read pin 2. So in other words, take a look at that pin and figure out if I'm pushing the button. If I am pushing the button, we've got it going low, so low means it's being pushed. So if the button has been pushed, then set the on or off state equal to 1. 1 means the motor should be running. Then, the rest of our code, with one exception, is the same, but you put it inside this while loop, which basically says, which, which says while the on or off state is the same as 1, remember we just set that right here, then go ahead and run through my code, which is going to do a full rotation. You need to stop it, though. So the way to stop it is when you get to that full rotation if statement, remember, if the distance is equal to 
the full rotation, then go ahead and set the on or off state back to zero. And if you flow through the code again, that means it won't run anymore until you push the button again. Let's take a look. Push the button. We get a rotation. Won't do anything. Push the button again. Goes backward. Boom. Now, let's do something different. Let's have it run forward while we hold the button down for, in theory, as long as we want. And then when we let up, it's going to automatically move back to zero or home position. Check it out. Pushing down, let up, goes back to zero. Go a little bit, back. Hold it down longer, goes back. Cool, right? Let's take a look at the code. So here's our loop code. This is the stuff that matters. While the button is being pushed, go ahead and do our normal stuff. We're going to just keep counting the distance. Distance equals distance plus one. And we're going to keep reading the digital pin because when we stop pushing the digital pin, we need to know that. So you need to be checking that because that'll, what's, that'll what be what breaks this while loop. So basically, it's going to keep looping through that as you're holding the button down. So as soon as we let up, we want to do two things. First thing we want to do, reverse the direction we're moving. Then, second thing is another while loop. While the distance is not zero, so keep going until it gets to zero, Digital right, the same thing, just pulse the motor, and then every time you pulse it, distance equals distance minus one, and that's going to bring us back home. And there's a small chance I'm off by one tick. That'll actually be fun when we hook the encoder up in the next videos to see, is this perfect? Is it really close? Where do we have any problems? The only other hiccup here, you've got to reset digital pin eight to low. That's the direction at the top. And that was it, folks. Again, this code and all the other code are, are on the Patreon website. You can see a little I button in the top right-hand corner to download. Now, the last thing, and this is the coolest thing, um, well, actually not cool, which is if you've noticed, we've decreased the speed down to like five. But if we do that on our original file, it would, it would, it, it, the, the stepper would trip over itself. It would be going too fast. Um, but here we are able to do that. And the reason is, I don't know the technical lingo, but basically the Arduino is only processing one thing at a time, and it's going through a loop of commands. And we've added all this code, you know, reading these analog pins, reading these digital pins, um, and that slows it down because it's pulsing every time it loops through. Well, the loop gets slower, the motor moves slower. Let's take a quick look at how we can, one way to fix that. We're going to come back to this in another video with interrupts and some more advanced stuff. So we're actually back to the basically the original code. We're setting the speed at 75. Let's take a look at how fast that moves. So pretty quick relative to the, what we were just looking at. Now, let's go ahead and add in the analog read that lets us adjust it with the potentiometer, which in theory will let us adjust it from a range of 50 to 200. So that would include where we're at right now. So in theory, we should be able to pretty closely match the speed. Slowest. Fastest, fastest is still slower. Why is that? Again, it's because um, analog reads are actually really slow for Arduinos to do. They take up a lot of time and that delays the pulse. So what we're going to do is we're going to comment this back out and we're going to only check the analog read every, two, what did I do? Thousand pulses. So if we said it's 3200 to make a full revolution, it's basically going to check the analog read about three times per revolution to say, hey, do I need to update the speed or not? Um, this is choppy. I mean, it's still fast, but it's letting the Arduino basically do 999 loops before I got to go do a slow loop. So it should be a lot faster. We have a new value, analog read countdown. So if that number equals zero, and by the way, we started it up here at 1,000. So if it's equal to zero, then go ahead and do my analog read. Um, and when you do that, by the way, reset it to zero. Otherwise, skip it. Don't, don't go through this analog read mini loop if statement. And every time we do loop, we're going to count it down. So this will start at 1,000, and it'll go to 999 all the way down to zero. And as soon as it hits zero, it will check the potentiometer. And there we go. Our slow speed is the slow speed. We can turn the knob. And we've got our fast. Now that's not technically the same because again, we're still bogging the Arduino down with one in 1,000 loops where it's got to check and slow it down. You, you, intervals you can change. So more to come on the next episode. 
I, I love the steppers, I really do. What I'm really excited for, folks, is the DC gear motors because there we can get some real power, some real torque, and DC gear motors aren't intrinsically easy to control the speed or constant speed or the revolutions, and we're gonna use that encoder, which is gonna help us tell where the DC gear motor is, and with some, I won't call them advanced because they're frankly not very expensive and they're easy to work with, but some DC motor controllers, we can start and stop that thing on a dime, try to do some ramp up, slow down stuff, Really cool stuff to come, folks. I always appreciate the viewership and likes, thumbs up, comments, shares. Take care. See you next Wednesday for the widget.